What's up everybody? Welcome to my channel. Today I'm reviewing and testing the White Knight set of 12 watercolor paints with the plastic box. I got this set from Amazon and it's currently sitting at $36.99 but of course prices are always changing on Amazon so you never know what it'll be tomorrow. But anyway it's a great deal for a set of 12 professional quality paints and I have had multiple people ask me to try these paints because they swear by them. They think they're amazing and beautiful and so I'm excited to try them. Now this set of 12 colors actually has has only four completely transparent colors in the set. So that's something I'm a little bit like, eh. I really love my transparent paints and I do use quite a few semi-opaque paints too. But when it comes to glazing and layering, there's nothing like fully transparent paints. The neutral black that comes with the set is quite nice. It actually is a semi-transparent black, so that's a good thing. And all of these have high light fast ratings with the exception of the green and the yellow ochre, which have just two stars, which is I guess medium light fastness. It's really nice when they have this little key here at the bottom, which shows whether they're staining paints or semi-transparent or non-staining. I think that's super helpful when trying to decide how exactly to use these paints in your painting. It's a great selection of warm and cool primaries, which is always so appreciated in a set of 12 because you are limited in your color choices. It's also great that most of these are single pigment paint colors. We do have a couple of triple mixes here. The umber and the neutral black are three pigment mixes and then the yellow ochre is a two pigment mix but the rest are all single pigment which means that they should interact and mix together with each other really well. I think this is hilarious. This is the most simple watercolor paint color title I've ever seen. It's just called green. That cracks me up. All right so let's open up this box and see how the set looks. So it's a nice plastic palette. Looks like it stays shut okay. We'll have to test that out a little bit more. So it comes with a nice little swatch card. I actually already made my own swatch card over here though pre-labeled and ready to go. So I'll probably be using this for my swatches instead. So each one, ooh, these are really large pans. These are much bigger than half pans. I am not used to this. It looks like they're almost full pan size, which is really great. So these should last you a really long time. We will go ahead and unwrap each of these individual little pans and go ahead and get started with our test swatches. Some brief info about the White Knights brand from their official website. This Russian company has been producing the White Knights watercolors since the 1930s. The paints were originally called Leningrad, but were renamed White Knights after the unique natural phenomenon characteristic of St. Petersburg, the city where production is located. Every year in the springtime, the city has a period of White Nights, when at night the sun does not completely set beyond the horizon, and the natural lighting remains quite bright, so that the whole night only consists of a few hours of light light twilight. How cool is that? The range consists of 134 colors, including 26 new granulating colors, 83 classic colors, 62 of which are single pigment, 18 pastel colors, and 7 metallic colors. These are super easy to unwrap and I'm impressed with how snugly they fit inside of their little container right here. So this is a different box than I've ever seen before. I'm so used to the metal pans and it's quite a nice design. And it looks like this portion of the palette can actually be removed to create more mixing space. And yep, it looks like there's these little tabs here which you can attach to the bottom. Yeah, so it snaps into place down there and then you have even more mixing space, which is so nice. I'm all about pans fitting snugly because there's nothing worse than when you open up your paint set and they all fall out. <laughs> So if you are struggling to get the pans out, you can actually remove this right out and pop the pan out from the bottom. There we go, that's much easier. On Amazon, this particular box set gets four and a half stars with 519 ratings. So that's a pretty good rating for this set. And I can tell just by touching these, and I also know just based on the website, that these are semi-moist pigments, similar to Sennelier. So they re-wet very easily. They're not going to be rock hard at any time, even when they're dry, just because they have that semi-moist quality to them. So there's the full set. Isn't that lovely? Look how big those paints are. I'm so impressed by this already. I do like metal sets generally when I'm plein air painting because they stick to my magnetic Peshad box, but I am going to take this out with me today because the weather is gorgeous out and I'm going to test this out plein air painting and just see how it works for me later. But for now, let's do some quick swatches and see how these colors look on paper. 
For my swatches, I made sure to paint over a dark Sharpie line so that I could test the transparency. I also did a lifting test with a damp brush to see how staining the colors are. Cadmium Lemon, which is PY35, is a semi-staining, semi-transparent, cool yellow with a high light fast rating. Cadmium Yellow Medium uses the same pigment number, PY35. It's a warmer yellow, totally opaque, and non-staining. Yellow Ochre is made from PY43, which is a natural yellow iron oxide, and PY154, also known as benzimidazolone yellow, a bright synthetic organic pigment. It is non-staining and semi-transparent. Now, for some reason, this one is listed as having only medium light fastness, even though both PY43 and PY154 are typically very light fast. Cadmium Red Light, PR108, is a beautiful, bright, warm red with a high light fast rating. It is opaque, non-staining. Carmine is labeled with pigment PR19, although there is actually some debate about whether this is mislabeled. PR19 is actually a rare synthetic organic pigment, whereas the more commonly used PV19 is much more affordable and readily available. Either way, it doesn't really matter to me which pigment number it comes from. This is an excellent light fast rating. It's transparent and staining, and it's just a gorgeous cool red. Ultramarine is a staple on my palette. This one is a perfect clear blue, semi-staining and semi opaque made from PB29. If you're enjoying this video and you want to learn a little bit more about watercolor basics, check out my free watercolor jumpstart guide. I'll include a link in the description so you can download that for yourself. Azure is made from PB15, from which colors like phthalo blue, cerulean blue, and a whole range of intense greenish blues are made. It is transparent, staining, and has a high light fast rating. Emerald Green, PG7, also known as thalocyanine green, is a very strong color. It is heavily staining and transparent with a highlight fast rating. This dark forest green, simply titled green, is made from PG8 or nitroso green. It's transparent and staining and absolutely beautiful, but unfortunately has a poor light fast rating. I would recommend using this one only in sketchbooks. Umber is made with PY43, PBR7, and PBK7. The black pigment in this mix is known as lamp black, which is almost pure carbon made by burning petroleum or natural gas and collecting the soot. This umber color is semi-transparent, non-staining, and has a high light fast rating. Burnt Umber is made from PBR7, the same pigment used for my favorite Daniel Smith Burnt Sienna. It's semi-transparent, non-staining, and light fast, and it's an essential color on any palette, in my opinion. Neutral Black is made from PR187, which is a synthetic organic red, PB151, which is otherwise known as Thalo Blue Red Shade and has powerful tinting and darkening strength, and PBK7. It is semi-transparent and staining with a high light fast rating. There they are, all 12 swatches. I am super impressed with this set. The colors are incredible. They're highly pigmented. I'm so impressed, especially by this neutral black. It's really rare for me to dip into a set of pans and get this dark, this rich of a black from just one swipe of the brush on that pan. So that one really impressed me. I also love this green. It's almost like sap green, but it's definitely richer and darker. And the carmine, absolutely beautiful. Emerald green, perfect ultramarine. The azure is beautiful. I wasn't super impressed with this three pigment umber color. It's just kind of blah to me. So that's probably not one I'll use a lot, but the cadmium red light is really nice. And yellow ochre is a little bit weak. I prefer my Holbein yellow ochre. It's just a stronger, more pure yellow ochre color, but the two yellows are really nice. So overall, this is a very impressive and affordable professional set of paints. So now that we've done our swatches, the next step is to take our colors outside, try them out on an actual painting and see how the plastic palette does outdoors with my Peshad box or or I really have to kind of try it out and see what is the best setup for this particular paint box. And that's something I always test out with a new set of travel paints. So let's get outside and paint. This is Chautauqua Park, one of the most amazing places in Boulder. And I found a little park bench right here. So I think I'm gonna try setting all my stuff down and normally I stand and paint and I have an easel for that, but I think today, it's so beautiful out and I'm trying out this new set of paints and I'm not sure how well it's going to go on my Peshat box. So we'll just sit here. It's a nice bench. Beautiful day. Got my sunscreen on. <laughs> We're all ready to go. 
I set up my favorite lightweight standing easel. This is the Yugo tripod and six by eight inch Peshad box by New Wave. This set is an investment, but it's one I keep using again and again. I set it up at just the right height for sitting, attached the magnetic side panels, and placed my new White Knights paint set on the Peshad box. It really isn't a great fit, but it did sit on the side panel snugly enough, so I didn't worry about knocking it off, and the plastic mixing space on my Peshad box was sufficient for color mixing, so I didn't need to use that extra mixing panel on the White Knights palette. I grabbed a water jar and a spray bottle, my Winsor Newton 7 by 10 inch cold press watercolor paper block, a sponge for water control, a pencil, and a couple of travel brushes. When I'm plein air painting, I always start with a light sketch. I squint at the scene in front of me and try to break it down into large, simple shapes. It's tempting in this drawing stage to sketch little details like trees and cracks in the rocks, but the most important things to outline are just light and shadow shapes. I sketched the shapes of those prominent jutting rock faces and the mass of trees covering the mountain. The foreground is just grass, so there was nothing to sketch there. For the sky, I decided to use the azure color. I wanted it to bleed into the mountains a little for a softer transition in the tree areas. I used a brush loaded with water to wet the sky area and the mountains and then quickly painted in a flat blue wash, just leaving one fluffy cloud on the left side. This cloud was actually not in the scene in front of me. I borrowed it from a totally different part of the sky, but you get to do things like that when you're the artist. Even with pre-wetting the paper, I still struggled with my paper drying too fast and hard edges beginning to form. I knew I'd have to add a second wet layer to the sky. I then used my cadmium lemon and emerald green to block in some quick base washes for the trees and grass. Now just getting some color down in the beginning can help boost your confidence and move you forward. As I worked, I noticed that these colors in their purest forms are so vibrant and gorgeous. The pigment load is so amazing, but as I tried to mix some more muted purples using the carmine and the emerald green, which would typically produce a nice purple, it ended up creating kind of a grayish brown, and I was somewhat surprised that these single pigments were not playing together as well as I would have expected. There was in fact one reviewer on Amazon who mentioned that she did not enjoy mixing with these paints, that they tended to produce muddy colors, perhaps due to the fact that most of them are either semi-transparent or opaque. I think this was accurate as I also struggled with my color mixes, particularly the greens. This is not a problem I typically have with my Sennelier or Schmincke paints. I steered away from using the PG8 green since it's not light fast, so I had to use just the emerald green and try mixing it with my earth tones to create muted and natural tree colors. Since all of my earth tones and the yellows on this palette are opaque or semi-opaque, I did notice that my mixes looked kind of muddy. In spite of this, I still really enjoyed painting the rock shapes and blocking in the trees. For the rocks, I used light washes of carmine and burnt sienna, and then mixed up some rich purples for the strong cast shadows using carmine and azure. I wanted to make sure the whole mountain appeared darker than the sky, so I added enough color and value to really help it stand out. For the trees furthest away, I employed the tip of my brush to create little tree shape suggestions. I used more simple, washy brush strokes to add color to the grassy hillside, dipping a little into the carmine, cadmium red light, emerald green, yellow ochre, and cadmium lemon and then used more specific and intentional brush strokes for the trees closest to me. I used a mix of my emerald green and a little of that wonderful neutral black for the shadows in the trees, trying to leave areas of light surrounding each tree to suggest backlighting. This painting really was an excellent playground for just about all the colors on the palette. All told, it was such a wonderful day. Anytime you get to be outside in a beautiful environment and do the thing that you love, that's a good day in my book. You can see the wind really picked up and uh, got a little crazy while I was painting, but there's the finished painting. The set worked out great sitting here on the bench and it was so peaceful that I even got visited by a cute little dog. It was a lot of fun. Here you can see my whole setup in the scene in front of me. It was so much fun. I can highly recommend this White Knight set for beginners, especially if you are looking for something that's more cost effective. That said, it's probably not one I'm going to grab all the time since the mixes were so difficult for me. But if you like to paint with pure color and you love a heavy pigment load, I think this is a great set for you. Check out this next video all about the Windsor Newton Cotman field set and I'll see you over there.